I'm Trevor Rose Samlin with Old Irving Brewing Company. Welcome. Behind me, you'll see our brew house. We opened up about a year and a half ago. Kind of a food and beer centric brew pub with elevated eats and drinks. You know, when we were first coming up with what we wanted to call this place, you know, we had gone through a series of names and I, I'm kind of like more of under the impression that you want to do something kind of fun and creative and cool and kind of edgy. Um, but then we started thinking more and more about it and we, we looked at the, the building itself and we kind of looked at our team that had all built this place and all of us live in this neighborhood. We live, we work here. Um, you know, a lot of us, uh, a lot of people's kids go to local schools. I mean, even our general contractor who literally built the place has an amazing house in this neighborhood. Uh, it, and it just became more and more apparent that we are, we are definitely a neighborhood pub. And so it just felt like a right time to, for Old Irving uh, Park to have their very own brew pub. So we kind of kept with the name Old Irving Brewing Company. Um, very cool thing as well, Irving Park is actually named after Washington Irving who wrote Sleepy Hollow. So the name in itself has a really cool history to it anyway. Uh, with the logo and the designs, uh, we actually went through like a number of designers and just kind of picked one that we felt looked really great with kind of a like that badge look with incorporating some of the Chicago stars and really making us a Chicago brewery um, wholeheartedly because we do have um, a lot of pride in, in where we come from and in our neighborhood. So we wanted to keep that all, but we also wanted to be clean and, and attractive uh, to the eye. My background in, in brewing uh, really started in Michigan um, with Michigan's very um, vibrant beer drinking scene and brewing scene. I kind of grew up with craft beer. And uh, from there, I started brewing my own beer at home in my spare time. Uh, you'll find that a lot of my beers, you know, some of them are based in tradition and are just, you know, gonna be delicious and crushable. Some of my beers are going to come around as more, you know, currently putting on tap one that has both mushrooms and tea in it, and it tastes like uh, maple and bacon. Uh, my personal approach is always quality first, and when I can, I like to keep it as hyper-local as possible. So, uh, when I first am making a beer, I kind of start with, okay, what, what, obviously, what do I wanna make? Where does it fit on the menu? So I usually kind of gauge, like, okay, I need to fill in a dark, or I need to fill in a light, or I need to fill in a hoppy and then that kind of starts the, the whole process. I use Omega Yeast Labs, which is just over the bridge here to propagate all my yeast initially. Um, I do some repitches from that. When I can, I try to get local, locally sourced grains. Obviously, you can't always do that. And when I'm not, if I'm doing something as simple as a lager, I'll use like really high quality malt. With our menu and what people like in this neighborhood, and they, they're always gonna tell you what beer they want. Uh, our lagers sell like crazy well. So our Kolsch, if I do have a lager on tap, it goes super quick, everyone loves those. And then hoppy things people really like as well. But you always have to kind of keep a, a mix there too. So I try to keep a few interesting notes on there as well. Um, like I just talked about the maple and bacon beer. Uh, we also have a seasonal every single winter called Krampus Cookies. The philosophy behind that was like, well, you know, when Santa comes down the chimney, you always have cookies and milk waiting for him. I reckon if Krampus comes, you better sedate him with a beer. Uh, so ours actually tastes like cookies. It's got vanilla and cocoa nibs, and uh, the whole recipe itself is actually designed after a cookie recipe. So your base malt's kind of like the flour. The chocolate malt's kind of like your chocolate chips plus the cocoa nibs. You've got uh, crystal malt kind of bringing in uh, maybe some of like the brown sugar elements. And then, um, of course, I add lactose, which brings in kind of the milk element. And so it's a milk stout. With my culinary background um, here, I really wanted to kind of make sure that the food was um, really elevated. So uh, Jeff Linnemeyer, my uh, partner and myself, kind of wanted to seek out another partner to kind of take care of the food aspect for us. We really wanted to bring elevated food without being fine dining um, to this area. So we brought in a baker. Um, he makes all of our breads in house uh, for our sandwiches and things like that. We do have a few items, I call it like high lows. So we got some things that are like sandwiches, but then we also will have like an octopus dish, things like that. Uh, we have a wood fire grill uh, that we pull all of our meat off of. Uh, it adds like this really beautiful kind of like smoky uh, note to uh, all, all, of, all of our products that are put there. The philosophy on food has always been to have your standbys, but just make them better. Higher quality ingredients, everything made in house, and a lot of our stuff will actually use a lot of uh, spent grain from our brew house. Uh, any spent grain that we don't use in, in that will actually uh, 
get donated to local farmers, one of which is in Wisconsin. Even the last runnings of beer, we'll even take that out and we'll reduce it down into syrups. And we'll make malt syrups and trying to replace like our maple syrup and honey on our menu and things like that. Yeah, so the building here at Old Irving Brewing Company actually was originally a roof manufacturing plant. They would prefab roofs and, and uh, send them out the door. After that, it was kind of a bodega for a while. And when we arrived on scene, there was just a couple of cars from a uh, workshop next door that were just being stored here. So there's literally a few cars and just like some random toilet in, uh, in what is our tap room now. It took a lot of imagination, but we were kind of looking at the high ceilings. Uh, we love the garage door at the front, and uh, that wasn't always made of glass. It was. Uh, originally, you know, just all dark in here. Uh, the skylights were really dark as well, so we had to flip those up. But we, we could really tell that this, it felt like the neighborhood of Old Irving Park on the inside because a lot of the brickwork um, mimicked a lot of the buildings that are just outside when you're sitting here and dining, you can see it. Um, and, and it really just ties in everything. And we also like the fact that it felt like it was broken up into quadrants. So we have like this main kind of tap room on this side that has this very bar kind of dark feel to it. There's not a lot of windows. It kind of feels almost kind of like uh, drunkenly romantic. And then this room, which is uh, what we call more of our beer hall or indoor beer garden. Uh, we strung the garden lights. Uh, we have the door that opens up in the summer, bringing in a ton of fresh air. A lot of TVs so people can watch their favorite sporting event. A big projection screen that comes down here that people can hook up to. And then of course, behind me here, we surrounded the whole brew house in a fence and we built this little space right behind me. It's kind of like an indoor bags area with a couple of picnic tables to kind of give it some outdoor feels. So we call that the backyard or the game area. First, I just want to thank Taproom Travelers for coming through all the way from Wisconsin. Welcome to our first city. I hope you enjoy it. And for anybody who hasn't been here uh, yet, you know, we're right off the expressway. Um, you know, only by a block, block and a half right off the uh, Montrose Blue Line stop. Uh, come in, grab some food. We're open at 11 a.m. every single day, uh, seven days a week. We do brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, come and check us out. Have a beer. Have some food. It'll be great. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.